Trying to make the internet secure, to make it a safe place, has become a billion dollar industry. It's an industry really designed to do one thing, stay one step ahead of malicious hackers. Now you'll notice I said malicious hackers, because as it turns out, hackers come in different flavors. White hats are the good guys, black hats are the bad guys, and gray hats fall somewhere in between. My friend Sammy Kamkar is one of the good guys. I got into hacking and technology when I was around 10 years old. Um, I got my first computer, and uh, my mom spent everything she had to get me this computer. And the first day I got it, I set up the internet. And, you know, one of the best days of my life, I went online and I started searching for the X-Files, you know, one of the best shows. And I found uh, a chat room where I could chat with people about the X-Files. I go into this chat room, and immediately someone told me, get out. And I'm like, what? Well, why would I get out? I said, no. He said, you have 10 seconds to get out. I said, okay, random person on the internet, stayed in the chat room, and 10 seconds later, my computer crashed. I got a blue screen, I had no idea what happened. I, my mom spent all her money on this computer, and I just freaked out. I was scared that the computer was destroyed, but simultaneously thought that was the coolest thing ever. How do I do that? Hacking in the mid-90s was a lot different than the hacking that people associate today. There was no malicious intent. There was no theft. It was all very, very much driven by intellectual curiosity. Driven by that curiosity, Sammy, who at the time wasn't even old enough to drink, figured out how to hack into MySpace, a wildly popular early social media site. When he was done, everyone who visited his MySpace page ended up with the phrase, Sammy is my hero, on their MySpace page. Essentially, I had created a worm or virus, and there was no way to, to stop it. Sammy's curiosity infected more than a million MySpace users, forcing MySpace to take their entire site down within 24 hours. MySpace didn't come after me, but it was the government. It was the LADA that came after me for writing a virus. But ultimately, I took a plea agreement where I couldn't touch a computer for three years of my life. Now Sammy makes a living looking for vulnerabilities in online-enabled products, like refrigerators, cars, and baby monitors. Everything we have has technology, whether it's your garage or car or door lock even. So I want to see what's a way that this system is supposed to work and what's a way that you wouldn't necessarily want it to work. Sammy is a member of a new and growing international workforce, young white hat hackers hired to break into impenetrable systems and close their loopholes for them. Welcome to Hacker One. Is that secure? I hope so. <laughs> Companies looking to identify hard to spot vulnerabilities or bugs frequently offer cash rewards called bug bounties. And like a high tech headhunter, Hacker One connects the talent to the task. We use the term hacking, but we need to stop thinking about it as something closely related to criminals. It's a very, very diverse community of software engineers, tinkers, hobbyists, academics, security researchers. Uh, Microsoft has paid a, a bounty to a five-year-old hacker who bypassed the parental controls on his Xbox. Um, Google has done the same to a seven-year-old hacker. Technology bugs crop up all over the place. Anyone is capable of finding them. This is actually Uber's bug bunny program. Mm. You see here, we're working with a hacker called MDV, and you see that he's now actively engaging with a member of the Uber security team to understand the potential issue he found. What's most amazing to me, looking at this chain, is just how friendly this conversation is. Absolutely. It's a bit like, hey, I found this bug, and they're like, hey, yeah, yeah, you did. Thanks for doing that. Here's some money. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's so... <laughs> It's conversational. It's, this is absolutely the ideal response that you want to see from a company. Yeah. This kind of cooperation is nice to see, but it wouldn't be necessary if the vulnerabilities weren't potentially serious. What stops a white hat hacker from turning bad if they find a really good vulnerability? Same thing that stops your local doctor from taking out a kidney and selling it on the black market. You rely upon ethics and legal codes and people's own moral character. Um, the number of bad apples out there who would choose to use that, that knowledge for malicious or criminal intent is relatively small, and that's okay, as long as we're prepared for them and have designed for that eventuality. Crime has obviously been around with us since the dawn of civilization. 
Technology just allows criminals to really automate their attacks, to scale them, so now you can have a guy out in Eastern Europe that is attacking someone here in the United States without any repercussions, without a great deal of effort, and that's what makes it so different.